Today on Transfer Talk, we'll be discussing this man, Esteban Ocon, the former Force India driver, the Mercedes young driver. Where is he going to fit in, if he's going to fit in, in the 2020 Formula One grid? We've got 10 teams in Formula One at the moment, and next year, it's going to be the exact same. We've got drivers already lined up to fill seats. However, the guy that was touted as arguably a future Formula One champion, we'll talk about that a little bit later on, is he going to be on the grid next season? A little bit of background for you. Esteban Ocon came into Formula One halfway through the 2016 season, raced for Mana Formula One team alongside Pascal Verlein, replaced Rio Harianto at the time. And in the second half of that season, impressed enough for Mercedes to keep him on, not only in their junior programme, but to promote him to the Force India team. He spent two full seasons at Force India, as they were known. Well, one and a half seasons until they turned into Racing Point Force India, alongside Sergio Perez. And actually, while I don't think Ocon was super, super incredible, he was able to match Sergio Perez quite comfortably. And I think both of them were pretty much neck and neck for the two seasons they were there. Considering Perez's vast experience having raced since 2012, I think Ocon did a really good job. However, this season, as we all know, he's not in Formula 1. And the reason for that is Racing Point was bought out by Lawrence Stroll, father of Lance Stroll. And unfortunately for Esteban, Lance Stroll don't want to say stole his seat, but inherited his seat thanks to the buyout from his father. Perez reigned at the team. Ocon was going, looks very, very likely, to get a move to Renault. Unfortunately, with a shock move from Daniel Ricciardo to Renault, that crumbled. And ultimately, Ocon wasn't on the grid this year. So, next year, we're going to analyse where he's going to be. We've got four teams... I think potentially could snap up Ocon, but we'll have a chat about most of the teams on the grid and why potentially they won't be after him. But as you can see on screen, we are going to start with Mercedes, the team that have won every single race this season, somewhat controversially in some cases. However, his parent team, if you want to call him that, he has been their third reserve test driver, whatever you want to define it as, this season. Doing practice behind the scenes and helping develop the car. Is he going to be in a Mercedes next season? Well, from my point of view, I don't think he's quite ready yet. I still think he needs at least another season to really try and enhance his skills and prove that he deserves a chance in a top seat. That being said... I think he would be a good number two driver and potentially in a team like Mercedes could be a really good opportunity to develop in a top team. I think if he need, if he really wants to get to Mercedes, it's more down to what Valtteri Bottas and Lewis Hamilton decide to do with their careers. I think the team are happy with the lineup. I mean, winning every single race this season, only having got pole position twice, Mercedes are bossing it this year and they will question whether they want to really upset the dynamic within the team because it's just so, so lovely if you want to call it that. I mean, compare it to when Nico Rosberg was at the team, the hellfire within the team, how awful it must have been, seems very harmonious now. And I question whether Mercedes really want to upset that by bringing in someone like Ocon. First of all, upsetting the balance potentially with Hamilton, if Hamilton stays. Will he really want someone trying to steal his thunder at the front? Again, I don't think Ocon is as good as Hamilton and I'm not too sure he ever will be. But potentially for Mercedes, this could be their chance to try and test the waters a little bit. However, this has been Valtteri Bottas's arguably best season in Formula 1. Certainly his best season at Mercedes. Would seem a little bit strange to get rid of him now. And with Lewis Hamilton... I don't want to say likely to retire in the next few years, but certainly in the next five years, I would expect Lewis Hamilton reti to retire. Do they really want to get rid of Bottas now, or do they want to keep him for the long term when they have to replace Hamilton? That being said, could Hamilton retire at the end of this season? Unlikely, considering it looks like he's going to get his sixth world title. 
And I think most likely he's going to try and chase down that seven record of titles. However, after that, will that be Bottas' best time to move into Mercedes if he doesn't necessarily go there now, but waits two or three more seasons for a natural gap to open? I think that makes more sense. So, unfortunately for Ocon, it seems unlikely. However... If Vettel retires, that could be an opening for Bottas to move to Ferrari. There could be a seat open at Mercedes then. If Hamilton retires, maybe Ocon is one of the best placed drivers to move in. But still, I think that's more on the unlikely side for next year. Moving on, racing points. The team he drove for last year and the second half of last year, now just known as Racing Point, well, Sport Pacer Racing Point F1 team, Formerly known as Sport Pacer Racing Point Force India Formula 1 team. It never gets any easier to say. Would this be a good fit? First of all, I think yes. The team currently has a strong lineup. As I mentioned earlier, I think Ocon is as good as Perez. So if they swapped out for Perez with Ocon, all you're going to lose is that little bit of experience. And you could argue that a team like Racing Point in there infantry as a team that maybe they could need infancy is what I meant to say maybe they could need a little bit of guidance a little bit of experience with someone like Perez to help them move forward so maybe that will put them off however it is widely known that Racing Point are a Mercedes supplied team so that's nice links with Ocon there and nice links with Mercedes to get him a spot but also Lance Stroll, his best friend, Esteban Ocon. Now, that <laughs> read into that what you will. However, obviously that's going to be good omens if Perez does decide to leave, which again, I don't think is completely off the cards. I, I can sort of see in my head Perez making a switch at the end of this season to a team maybe like Haas. I think he would fit in really well at Haas. Maybe he would move... To Alfa Romeo, replace Kimi Raikkonen, replace Giovinazzi, something like that. I just get the gist that Perez wants to try and just make one last attempt to salvage his career. And don't get me wrong, he's not had a bad career. He just never had a chance at a top seat. So if Perez leaves, I think, yeah, Ocon's probably the best driver for Racing Point to bring in. However, again, I just struggle to see... The grid opening up with enough seats to be able to have Perez moving to one of those teams. It's getting a bit clogged up at the moment. There's an abundance of talent. You've also got guys from Formula 2 trying to move in as well. So I think more likely for Ocon to go to Perez than it is to Mercedes. But this is going to pee off some Esteban Ocon fans. Unfortunately, it seems like the most likely place for him to go is Williams. Now again, this isn't nailed on. Currently, Williams have Robert Kubica making his incredible return to Formula One. They've also got George Russell in his first year of Formula One doing a brilliant job. So who would they get rid of? Well, I think it's pretty clear, in my opinion anyway, that Kubica would be the one on the chopping block currently. That might change over the rest of the year, but currently when I'm doing this video, George Russell's had the upper hand. So, if Kubica goes, would it be sensible to bring in Ocon? Well, on the one side, Ocon's got those two and a half years of experience, which would balance quite nicely with George Russell, who himself would be going into his second season of Formula One. Ocon has proved himself to be a strong driver. That would be a really good balance with Russell to see how good George Russell is. And it would be a great chance for Mercedes to decide which of the two drivers would deserve a seat in their number one team if Hamilton or Bottas did move on. That being said, I think the issue here is Williams themselves. Claire Williams, the deputy team principal, because her father, Frank Williams, is technically still the team principal, has categorically said they do not want to become a B team. They do not want to become a Mercedes junior team. So, to me... That suggests she will not want two Mercedes young drivers in the team. I can understand that completely. 
if the team did decide, you know, they're struggling so, so much this year, if they did eventually decide to do that, maybe that would be a big beneficial thing for the team. Again, topic of conversation for another day, that one is. However, if they don't decide to go that route, again, I just think it could be a little too difficult to get Ocon in the seat unless Russell moves on, which Williams have said again, they want Russell to be there for the long term. So it seems, once again, there's a bit of a traffic jam and Ocon can't squidge his way into another mercedes supplied team. So where else is there? Well, there's still plenty of other teams up the grid, seven in total. However, the issue becomes, Ocon is a Mercedes young driver. So the chances of him going to Toro Rosso, a Red Bull team, unlikely. The chances of him going to a team like Renault, Unlikely now Renault have got a brilliant lineup in Ricardo and Hulkenberg. McLaren, a similar sort of story with Renault. McLaren have a strong lineup in Sainz and Norris, so it's not like they're going to go anywhere soon. How about Alfa Romeo? Maybe Ferrari could sense a bit of a, a steal. They could steal Ocon away from their young driver program, like they did with Pascal Verline. Bring him over to Alfa Romeo, try him against Kimi Raikkonen. And maybe if Vettel retires, bring him into Ferrari. That could be a really nice shot. I think his best chance, outside of Mercedes teams, is Haas F1. Now, I can see a lot of drivers going to Haas F1. And the reason, I, I mean, I said it with Perez earlier on. The reason I think this is that both Magnussen and Grosjean, whilst on their day can be up there with some of the best on the grid... Most of the time, they're not on their day. Grosjean having a better season this year than last year, I think, might be a bit of a biased opinion, I think he's had the edge over Magnussen this year. Grosjean, at the beginning of the year, hampered with reliability issues, and more often than not, when both cars have finished, has outraced Magnussen and has outqualified Magnussen. K-Mag himself, an awesome year last season, brilliant job. Also this year, whilst you know, in the head-to-head -head battle, isn't quite doing as well with his teammate, has collected points on the weekends where the car has been good. So, I think both drivers are under a bit of pressure, and after last weekend, Magnussen's absolute cry pie, maybe cracks starting to show within the team. So, some say that Haas F1 is a clear-cut Ferrari B team. I don't quite see it like that, personally. I still think, whilst they... Get, they are supplied by Ferrari for many of their parts. I still feel they're a team that has a little bit more freedom when picking drivers. And I think a team like Haas that maybe next year you'd hope to be in that midfield fight for, for best of the rest. That is a brilliant place for Esteban Ocon to be. I think if he does go there, it's likely he will have to cut Mercedes ties or Mercedes will have to <laughs> slap down a giant check in the face of Haas F1, which I suppose for the team is, is beneficial all round. And if they can nail Ocon down to a multi-year deal, that could be exactly what they need, especially with Grosjean arguably coming to the end of his career. I think that would be quite a nice replacement. And Ocon has proved his consistency over the past couple of seasons. I think that's what Haas F1 need now. And so if the team could bring in Ocon, that I think would be a really sensible move. But as always, what do you think? It's a real crowded grid next year. Ocon, do you think he's good enough for Formula 1? I think a lot of people would say yes. However, the, more, the bigger question, is he world championship material? Let me know in the comments below. If I was going to put money on it now, I think Ocon will end up at Racing Point. I think Perez might make that move to Haas. I mean, for many of the similar reasons I just said about Ocon going there. But I think the team Racing Point, if Perez did leave, Ocon just seems to make the most sense to me. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Sorry if there's a bit of an echo once again today. Again, crazy, crazy things going on here at the moment. But thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.